speak to them. He begins to speak to Joshua and tells the leader, this is what you're going to do. You're going to give them some instructions and these rules of engagement. I need you to understand the first thing, Joshua, in these rules of engagement. They must obey your instructions. They're not to look at the instructor and judge the instructor. They're to obey the instructions of the instructor. The instructor may be tainted, but it has nothing to do with the instructions. Understand this. When you go to an apple tree, you don't eat the tree. You don't eat the bark of the tree. The tree can have holes in it. The tree can have broken branches. And some leaves can have fallen off the tree. You don't judge it by that. You judge it by the fruit it bears. You pluck up off the apple to eat it. You don't eat the bark. See, the problem with the church today is we're chasing trees and we're not going after fruit. The Bible says you'll know them by the fruit they bear. Not how the tree looks, but by the fruit they bear. But your neighbor say, neighbor, see, you will always be let down if you keep running after trees and not running after the fruit. You will always be disappointed when you're chasing trees. To somebody say, neighbor, you can have Daryl Hill. I don't want Daryl Hill. I want what comes out of his mouth because it's the word of the Lord. To somebody say, neighbor, go after the fruit. Oh, touch your neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, go after the fruit. That's why we have a problem now because we have put up so many different personalities. We have raised men up. We have raised up trees and we have totally put aside the fruit thereof. Grab somebody and say, if God speaks through a donkey, then certainly he can speak to a man. I'm not in church looking for the issues in my pastor. I'm in church because I'm living from off his mouth. Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I know you don't want to hear that. But their first instruction was they were to obey the instructions of Joshua the leader. Now Joshua was young. Joshua was inexperienced. He was young. He was not Moses. But they had to obey Joshua because God was speaking through Joshua. Glory be to God. Rule number two, and I'm almost finished here. They were to move in order. They were to move in order. They could not just do whatever they wanted to do. There was a specified order by which they to march and engage the enemy. The problem with the church is they want to do whatever they want to do when they want to do it. Because everybody's grown. Nobody pays my bills. These are just mere words from folk who don't want to get in order. But they want to move in order. Six days glory be to God was made to walk around. One time the walls of Jericho it looked silly. And on the seventh day seven times men of war that were armed were to go in front of the priest. Then the priest then the people the armed men up front the priest and then the people see the problem with the church today is we put people in the front and we got the people who are armed in the back but I need some people up front who know how to fight in the spirit we don't need leadership who don't have no weapons of warfare we need leaders who pray who fast who seek the face of God I don't care how much money you give my question is are you anointed to fight a demon that's the question look at your neighbor say neighbor you can dress yourself up all you want to you can look nice all you want to do you hear wear your suit do whatever you want to to adorn your outer body but if you don't have the anointing on the inside you are unarmed and we don't need you in the front oh glory be to God we don't need to keep putting titles on you we need to know are you going to prayer service 
tongues. Can you lay hands on the sick and they recover? Do you speak in tongues to somebody say, neighbor, this generation, we need an armed army. We got people, but ain't nobody anointed. We got folk, but nobody got power. Somebody shout, we need power with God. They want to go in the front because the arm had to be ready to fight. Mm, grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, God needs some people up front who would be the ones who started off. He needs people up front who know how to woe to warfare. He teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. The problem is we got folk up front who don't want to lift their hands in worship, who don't want to move their fingers around, who don't understand that spiritual warfare is in your hands. And sometimes when you're anointed, all it takes for you to clap your hands, wave your hands, because we're in spiritual warfare. They want to put the arm in the front. The priest would follow after. And the reason being is because in times of warfare, sometimes you need God to shift in your life because sometimes he will be in front of you. Let's look at Israel. In the daytime, when they were leaving Egypt, he came as a pillar of cloud in the day to lead them. And by night, he came a pillar of fire to lead them. But when the enemy began to chase them, God shifted his position and they couldn't see God in front of them but God was behind them blocking them from the enemy that was chasing them and the Lord spoke to 